Lord, our Lord, how excellent thy name, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Who has set thy glory above the heavens will praise thy holy name forever, evermore. Hi, I'm Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey, and welcome to the evening services for Sunday, January the 2nd, 2022. Uh, I remember as a teacher uh, how difficult that was for me to write that next new year down uh, for the longest time. So we have now officially moved from 2021 to 2022. This evening, we will sing a few songs. Uh, we will observe the Lord's Supper and we will uh, hopefully have a message that uh, will kind of uh, dovetail into the new year. And I hope that it will be beneficial to each one of us. So if you have your song books, Songs of Faith and Praise, please turn to number 636, 636. <clears throat> to love someone more dear <coughs> every day. To help a wandering child to find his way. To ponder over noble thought and pray. And smile when evening falls. And smile when evening falls. This is my task To follow truth as blind men long for light To do my best from dawn of day till night To keep my heart fit for his holy sight and answer when he calls and answer when he calls this is my task and then my savior by and by to me when faith hath made her task on earth complete, and lay my homage at the Master's feet, and in the jasper walls, within the jasper walls, this crowns my task. Number 681. This song reflects some attributes that we strive toward as Christians. 681. More holiness give me, more strivings within, more patience in suffering, more sorrow for sin, more faith than my Savior. <coughs> more sense of his care, more 
joy and his service, more purpose in prayer, more gratitude give me, more trust in the Lord, more pride in his glory. In his word, more tears for his sorrows, more pain at his grief, more meekness in trial, more praise for relief, more. Purity give me more strength to overcome, more freedom from earth stains, more longings for home, more fit for the kingdom, more. Useful I'd be, more blessed and holy, more Savior like me. And to prepare our minds for the Lord's Supper, let's turn to number 350. 350. <coughs> Excuse me. We'll sing verses 1, 2, 4, and 5. When my love to Christ grows weak, when for deeper faith I seek, then in thought I go to thee. Garden of Gethsemane, there I walk amid the shades, while the lingering twilight fades. Suffering, friendless one, weeping, praying, there alone, there behold his agony, suffered on the bitter tree. Anguish, see his faith, love triumphant, still in death. Then to life I turn again, learning all the worth of pain. Learning all the mind that lies in a full self-sacrifice. We come to the part of the service where we remember uh, Jesus' uh, death on the cross uh, that brought grace to us that uh, gave us uh, the possibility of having forgiveness for our sins and uh, gave us the opportunity uh, to live with our God forever. Let's just remember uh, what Jesus did 
uh, let's remember that he bore the sins of the world on that cross, that the sins were indeed nailed to the cross, that he suffered, that he bled, that he died, that uh, you and I might live. And so as we uh, partake of the bread, let's remember Jesus's body. Let's pray together. Our wonderful Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that Jesus was willing to leave heaven and come down to earth in human form. And you knew all the while that in that human form that uh, he would take the, the form of a bondservant and that he would take the form of a martyr, that he would give up his life, that we might live. As we partake of the bread, we remember how his body was so mistreated on the cross. And we know that he allowed that to happen for each one of us. Bless us as we partake. We ask it in his most holy name. Amen. Let's give thanks for the fruit of the vine. We know, dear God, that Jesus' innocent blood poured from his body as he hung on that cross. We know that that blood oozed from different parts of his body, from his hands, from his feet, from his side that was pierced. And we have come to know that blood is uh, the New Testament in our faith. That blood is that which washes our sins away. Help us as we remember, to remember the innocent blood as we partake of this fruit of the vine. We do so, hopefully in a manner that pleases you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As a matter of convenience at this point in our service, we remember that all that we have uh, comes from uh, our God. And so uh, it is time for us to think of how we have laid by in store during the week so that we can give just as we have prospered, give back to you, to the church uh, that Jesus gave his life for, the church that represents Jesus Christ. And we pray that uh, those that use and disperse those funds will do so in a way that will be, be beneficial to people, that people will be evangelized and people will be helped. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're grateful that we have the ability to give and the desire to give. Help us to do so with an open and cheerful heart. Help us to return to you that which is yours and help us to remember there are such greater things out there, but this is just one of those things that you have told us that we're supposed to do. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, as they did in times of old, to give of our first fruits. Bless us in our giving. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. And our last song before the lesson is number 477. <clears throat> we'll sing verses 1 and 2. 1 and 2. There is a place of quiet rest near to the heart of God, a place where sin cannot molest near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless, Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. 
Hold us to wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. There is a place of comfort sweet, near to the heart of God. A place where we our Savior meet, near to the heart of God. Oh, Jesus, bless Redeemer, sent from the heart of God. Hold us to wait before Thee, near to the heart of God. Thank you for hopefully singing with us. I know the Lord was praised in our song, and I know that we should always have praise on our lips for our God, whether it is in a uh, song of voice or the song that uh, uh, just resonates in our hearts. Well, we have made it through 2021. Uh, how did your year go? You have time? <laughs> uh, we can all reflect and think about uh, the things that took place uh, during the year 2000. And 21. We know this is, you know, part of this pandemic time. Uh, we were hoping that we were making our way out of it until this, uh, this new, uh, strain, uh, came about. And now, uh, I know here in New Jersey, there has been an increase. And so 2001 did not exactly, uh, go out with a, a whimper but out with the bang. And so here we are. We will now on our checks, we will now in our correspondence, uh, however it might be, using the date 2022 instead of the uh, terms, uh, numbers 2021. 2022 is a new year. And you know, with that, uh, we might think of it, and I'm maybe challenging each one of us, including challenging myself, uh, that in many ways, each of us gets to have a new beginning. This is my 2022 year. And you know what? When you think about that for a moment, it is a blessing. I know it was just a single day uh, from the 31st of December to the 1st of January. But, um, we almost look at it as something new and different. And you know, interestingly enough, as Christians, we can make it new and different. But you know what? There's another new beginning that's even better than 2021 turning into 2022. Paul wrote in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17. He says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Kind of sounds like the passing of a year, doesn't it? From one year to another year. But this is more profound. This is talking about when a person uh, takes on Jesus Christ in their lives. And indeed, uh, something new happens. It doesn't matter what sins one has committed. 
It does not matter what one's old man was like, what one's old person was like. When one comes into Christ, they become a new person. Therefore, what we have is the title of my lesson, A New Beginning. Notice that this transition, according to what we just read, takes place, I use the quotations, in Christ. And what that means is that one enters into a relationship with Jesus Christ. In Romans chapter 6, verses 3 and 4, the Apostle Paul says, this is how it happens. All right. This is how we get into Christ. This is how from 2 Corinthians 5, 17, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, here is how it happens. And in a very detailed way, Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. Or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. And so this very simply says, by being immersed in water, by being baptized into his death, we rise up out of the water to a newness of life. And we are now in Christ. And you know what that is? It's a new beginning. Now, one has a new beginning when their sinful lives are in their past. And what happened in their past is forgiven. The Apostle Paul, uh, before he became Paul, went by the name of Saul. He was a devout Pharisee. And when the Christian movement took place, Saul, to become Paul, did not accept it. As a matter of fact, he became uh, one of those people that with all of his might persecuted those Christians and brought them to law. It is even said that he was there in the crowd when Stephen, uh, the first Christian martyr, was stoned. Now, on the road to Damascus, Saul was blinded by a light and he saw Jesus and he heard his words. The words were, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? And he was blinded by that light and he had to be led into Damascus. And there he came into the home of a Christian by the name of Ananias. And still being blind, having not eaten for a period of time, Ananias then said to him, Now why do you delay? Get up and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on his name. Yes, even Saul who became Paul, the writer of all of those wonderful letters in our New Testament, went through the same, through the same steps for his new beginning that each of us still do today. As he was told, arise and be baptized. Why? So that your sins can be washed away. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. And so his sins were washed away. But make no mistake, there wasn't anything physical about the water that washed those sins away. But because he entered into the death of Christ, where Christ had shed his blood for our forgiveness, 
Paul's calling was more than verbal. Yes, he said that now his life was going to change, but there is something that had to mark his verbalization, and that was his physical obedience. And when he obeyed by being baptized, he was calling on the name of Jesus Christ to do what he had promised, and that was to wash his sins away. The book of Acts is a book of new beginnings. The book of Acts is exactly that. We, we start, our benchmark is the second chapter of the book of Acts, where Peter preaches what is considered the first gospel sermon. And so uh, at that point in time, um, we know that folks were going to come into a newness of life, a newness in life in which their past sins would be forgiven. The Hebrew writer says it very succinctly in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 12, where he says he will remember their sins no more. And so with that being said, Paul isn't the only one in the book of Acts and in our New Testament mentioned who was given this instruction. In Acts chapter 2, when Peter preached that sermon to them and he touched their hearts and the people said, what must we do? And in Acts chapter 2 and verse 38, Peter says, repent each one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Luke who wrote this portion of Acts, went on to say in verse 41, So then those who had received the word were baptized, and that day they were added about 3,000 souls. So on that particular day, that day of Pentecost, 50 days after the Passover, that Jesus had risen from the dead, Peter told the people what they must do to get into Christ, what they must do to start a new beginning for their lives. And as I said a moment ago, that's what the book of Acts is about. We have conversion after conversion after conversion in the book of Acts, and each of them marks a new beginning. In each case where one has taken on Christ, has been saved, and has begun their new walk, their new beginning as they were baptized, their new beginning is stark in comparison to what their lives once were. In the eighth chapter of the book of Acts, it talks about Samaritan people being baptized to have a new beginning. That's in Acts chapter 8 and verse 12. If we continue in the book of Acts all the way down to verses 28 to 40, we are told about an Ethiopian man who was riding in a chariot and Philip, who we call Philip the Evangelist, appeared to him and they rode along. And the Ethiopian was reading from the book of Isaiah and didn't quite understand. And Philip uh, uh, took those words and explained them to him. And we know what Philip must have said because uh, when they moved along, there was a body of water. I don't know if it was a river, if it was a lake, it was a pond. But the Ethiopian looked at Philip and he said, there's water. What keeps me from being baptized? And they went down into the water and Philip baptized the Ethiopian. And it says in verse 38, uh, verse 40, that he went on his way rejoicing. Why? His sins had been forgiven, and now he had a new beginning to his life. In Acts chapter 10, we have record of Cornelius, who is considered to be the first 
Gentile convert. And this happened through Peter. Both of these men had visions. And we have the details of how Cornelius came to the work, it came uh, into um, the fold of uh, Christianity, that he and his whole family were baptized for the forgiveness of their sins. And then further down in, in Acts chapter 16, we have the conversion of Lydia, and she became, according to Acts 16, 15, a new creature. What happened to her? She had a new beginning. In that same chapter, we have the account of the Roman soldier and his family in, in uh, Acts chapter 16, verses 31 and 34. And that conversion of him and his family is recorded for us. His family began a new walk. This was their new beginning. In each case in the book of Acts, this book of new beginnings, people received their new beginning when they were baptized into Jesus Christ. And so we have moved from the year 2021 to 2022. The reality is, it's just a date on a calendar. It's just one day forward. But it's our way that we mark time because we're given so little of that time here on earth when compared to eternity. And so we mark time uh, by our watches, our clocks, by our calendars. And the, the passing of each day marks a, a new chance that we have to work for the Lord. And so as we look at our lives this evening, we might ask ourselves the question, have we had our new beginning? Your new beginning is gained exactly the same way that all of the new beginnings that I have recounted for you over the past couple of moments have happened. They received their new beginning by confessing their faith in Jesus, repenting of their sins, and being immersed in water to reach the blood of Christ so that their sins may be washed away. And so that same invitation is offered to each one of us to start our new beginning. And if we haven't done that as yet, the invitation stands, it rings out crystal clear. Just as on the day of Pentecost, we ask that question, what must I do to be saved? And the same thing that Paul wrote about in Romans chapter 6, verses 3 to 4. Or you do not know that all of us who have been baptized into Jesus Christ have been baptized into his death. We've been buried with him through baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead, through the glory of God, we too might have a newness of life, a new beginning. If you haven't started that new beginning and want to come to Jesus Christ tonight, we want to assist you. Please get in touch with one of us here at the Northfield Church and we will be there in a flash. I pray that uh, you would bless us as we transition from uh, 2021 to 2022. Let's, uh, let's close in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, as we mark the passage of time by uh, just one day, from 2021 to 2022, we're reminded of, of a, a new year, a, a new time that uh, we might uh, understand how blessed that we are and want to be a blessing to others with our lives. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to do that. Help us to be a blessing to those around us. Help folks that they might see Jesus Christ in us 
through the way that we conduct our lives, that we would reflect the, the traits that are, that are enumerated for us in Galatians chapter 5 verses 22 and 23 that we know of as the fruit of the Spirit. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, in all things to uh, want to become more like Jesus in our lives. Help us that we might strive to uh, have a, uh, if we haven't already had our new beginning, to have one. And as we have our beginning, to make it a good one. To make each day new and bright and uh, serve as a new opportunity to uh, not just be in you, but to serve you as we serve others. Bless us and continue to be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Set thy glory.